Fashion was like a very big accident. I wasn't supposed to be doing this. I was supposed to be a doctor. I was supposed to be a musician. I was supposed to be doing something with Oliver, but I'm here. I didn't want to do apparel. I didn't want to do it at all. I was scared of it. I was just like, I'll just stick to accessories. That's my zone. I'm good. I didn't know anything about designing. I didn't go to school for it. So. I went to Goodwill and I was like, well, if I can break down some of these pieces of clothing, I can then try to understand the basics of how to put a garment together. And that's what I did. So I picked up a pair of pants, I picked up a button down shirt, and then I just cut it all apart. And then from there, that's when I formed the basic shape. I'm really here now because of that. If God didn't want me to do this, he wouldn't have given me this talent, right? The fact that I didn't go to school for this, the fact that I was self-taught, had to figure out everything by myself to a certain extent, it was gonna pay off. And and it did. It was it was a long battle, it was a hard battle, but now I am in front of you all talking as the first designer in residence. I can honestly say that God has not steered me wrong. I don't wanna make this a religious thing, but I, that's truly how I feel. If I wasn't supposed to be here, I would not be here. Creating and designing is definitely my therapy, especially with this collection. At the beginning, I always say that I, I have a clear vision and then it always changes at the end, which I think that's the most beautiful thing about creating, because it's like, when you have a plan, God has a plan for you as well. In 2019, I was creating a collection uh, based on some weird dreams I was having. And there's a part in the dream to where a fire happens and it burns the figure up. She turns to ashes, but she returns black, just in all black. And I would wake up every time after that dream. So fast forward a month after the, that dream I was having, I'm getting ready for work. The same day I get a call saying that a client was wanting a piece that resembled fire. Her name was Milson Phoenix. Phoenix meaning to, you know, rise from the ashes. So around 2.50 that day, January 9th, something tells me to open up my front door. I open up the front door, smoke, flames everywhere. And I'm on the phone with 911. I'm just like, hey, there's a fire at this location. We need someone. While on the phone with dispatch, there's an explosion. Luckily, my back was turned. Glass went everywhere. Collection that I was working on that was, I would say, 70% of the way done was burnt to crisp. Firefighters came in there and sprayed down everything. Machines melted. I thought that that was gonna be the last time I was gonna touch a machine. I honestly did. After the fire, for me, I honestly wasn't really inspired to really create. That always stayed in my mind like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta find something else to do with my life because, you know, I put so much into fashion and, you know, in return I got nothing. Northwest Arkansas Fashion Week kind of put me back in the element of the reason of why and, you know, helping me understand my why, why I create. I came across this artist, and I'm sure a lot of you know her, her name is Marsha Ambrosius. She created a song called Glass. So glass could be interpreted in a few ways. But how I interpret it was that this is battle with self, you know? So if you can accept the fact that you are shattered glass, you'll make it far, you'll be fine. Because at the end of the day, nothing is engendered to be perfect. He got the inspiration from Marsha Ambrosius, a song called Glass, but it can also correlate to real life because no one's perfect. Everyone go through certain things and put up these mirrors and behind those mirrors, you have this whole broken person behind it. So it's okay to not have it all together because one day it will all form into something beautiful. With this collection, I was like, okay, well, 
I want everything to just resemble broken glass, but it's like, well, that's too straightforward. So I start to think about essential workers. What would their uniforms look like right now just during COVID and with the color palette and I can basically the structure of like fractured glass. I'm really second guessing myself as far as like some of the silhouettes are looking with the colors that I have. A part of the collection right now, though know, the colors are very muted. So it's getting to the point to where it's kind of like, I'm looking at some of my designs and I'm just like, man, is, is this too simple? But I just know that me, like my aesthetic, I'm not an avant-garde designer. I'm not super editorial, but I want to make sure that each piece that I make is telling a story. That to me is going to scream much louder than, oh, that's cutting edge. that you know. after the the call that i had with some of the designers uh, that are part of this program you know that they get they get me so excited to create again and to see their their faces light up when when i show them certain things it, you know it gets me excited it, it makes me happy and it basically put me in a place to help me understand like this is my purpose muted pink like the salmon pink or this crazy looking brown, it's very rich. Um, and so my struggle with that was, I didn't know whether or not that brown was going to resonate with the rest of the colors. I didn't want it to kind of like blend in with whatever was going on. Um, so that's what I'm kind of stuck with when it comes to this parka. I'm actually gonna do a reverse design um, for, for men, or it could be also for a woman where I would do a black bull denim and then I would do an overlay on the white, uh, the white utility mesh. I'm not like really good at women's wear. It's something about it that scares me. So I'm gonna try it out this time. And I told myself I was gonna challenge myself since everybody else is. So here's my thought, Bruce. The very first piece that you were wondering, the very first piece that you showed us that you were like, oh, I'm not sure if I should go with this pink or this da da da. Right. I almost that you should add one more color in to your palette and do that on that other one and then do this in the pink with that other color so that it then ties it all together. Okay. I just thought, I, thought, I don't know, I feel like maybe you could add just one more pop of something else. Creating clothes is kind of like coinciding with the journey of life. You know, sometimes you wake up, you don't know what's gonna happen. Or sometimes, you know, you have a schedule or you have plans and then something goes awry. So I have to continue to design in order for me to keep my sanity sometimes. With this collection, I found myself like losing myself and I was kind of going away and going astray from my aesthetic that I'm used to doing just because I was trying to figure things out. So um, in a sense, like this collection was a form of therapy for me. When COVID came around, we both started working more hours to help out due to certain restrictions that they have going on and needing to make sure we're taking care of things. With me working in healthcare, it was extremely hard for me to experience people taking their last breaths, dealing with COVID or other health-related issues, and then having to come home and try to create and try to be a mentor for other creatives. That was one of the things that challenged me week to week. I'm typically an optimist, but my time has been all over the place. Even having an hour to work on something is a blessing. I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be a part of the Emerge program because this was basically like my vacation away from what's going on in that hospital setting. It's like going on to the point where it's like, am I inspired to go into my production room to create? Or should I be a responsible person and go to sleep to start my day again. This past couple of weeks have just been like so crazy. It has. So, so I need to like simmer down. I understand. And make sure, yeah. I, I mean, I think everybody feels the same way. Like, 
as I said yesterday, you know, it's been kind of hard to stay motivated with what's been going on and, you know, in the world and in our personal lives. And it's like, okay, and then we have to try to be creative. And, you yeah. know, and, and for most of us, we're not in the right headspace to, to do that. So, um, y'all yeah, been helping me out quite a bit, just, you know, staying motivated, especially when all this stuff around me is um, going crazy. So. Oh, I completely understand. And yeah. you have this whole new learning curve. Whole so. oh, new. It's just like, I thought I knew fashion, and then it's like, I know nothing. Um, so that's where I'm at. The fashion industry is, is, is scary. I came in thinking I knew quite a bit, and it turned out I didn't know anything, especially when it comes to mass production and the budgets and how cutthroat and real the industry can actually get. With me being from Chicago, I have to go much harder just because of the stigma that people have as it pertains to Chicago, the part of town where I'm from, Southside. They're known for, for violence, for murders, et cetera, et cetera. And so when people hear that automatically, it's like they already have this perception of, okay, well, Bruce is an urban designer. And it's just like, I'm, I'm far more than that. opportunity that I had at the Momentary Museum. Basically my response to Nick Cave's Until, I was basically talking about black people could be basically a success story on Monday, an unarmed black man or woman gunned down by the police on Tuesday. I'm inspired by current events, I'm inspired by what's going on in the community. How can we get through to the community that obviously know that all lives matter. Um, but let's pinpoint the fact that black men and women are dying at astronomical rates due to the police force and body cams are not on during some of these stops. Information of the investigation is gone, just disappeared. How are we supposed to feel about that? And then of course we're waking up every day, like, am I next? definitely about having those hard conversations. People who feel like they're broken, I hope they're able to look at the collection and hear the meaning and be inspired to accept who they are. The biggest takeaway for me uh, that I want you to get from this collection is you might think you see one thing when you look in the mirror the first time, but what do you see the second time when you dig a little deeper? I just don't want people to lose sight of why they're creating. If I could get through to one person with a piece of clothing, I will do that.